It is only 67 words long, but as divisive today as it was 100 years ago. The letter by Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour was a boost to the Zionist dream of establishing a Jewish state in Palestine. And as Palestine struggled for national existence, for the Arabs, it led directly to the displacement and dispossession of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians. They still demand an apology. And when we talk about Balfour Declaration, we talk about the British betraying the Arab promises when they fought World War I with them. And that in itself is a badge of dishonor, which the British people and their governments should continue to suffer from. The anniversary is awkward for the British, proud of helping establish Israel, but acutely aware of Palestinian suffering. The letter said a Jewish homeland should not prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine. British officials admit in this regard there is work yet to be done. The British government says it won't apologize, but in a recent statement delivered at the United Nations, it did admit that the Israeli occupation is a continued impediment to securing the political rights of the non-Jewish communities in Palestine. There is therefore unfinished business. And so in official circles they speak of marking the centenary, not celebrating it. But some want a bolder concession. What we would like is a change in policy, not an apology, a cheap apology, but a change in policy and some sort of transparency, some sort of accountability, some sort of restorative justice to be fed into current British policy. While Prime Minister Theresa May will attend a dinner with her Israeli counterpart, Benjamin Netanyahu, British officials point to their aid programs and commitment to the creation of a Palestinian state. But the anniversary has opened old wounds. It is a reminder that the present stalemate in the peace process allows the perceived crimes and misdemeanors of the distant past to cast long shadows over the present. Simon McGregor with TRT World, London.